Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing schizophrenia and the antipsychotic drugs. Okay, so uh, we're just in the process of discussing the anatomy of the two phalami, okay, so that we can discuss the phalamic nuclei because one of the phalamic nuclei uh, is going to uh, degenerate in schizophrenia, okay, and this phalamic nuclei is linked to the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, so it could explain the reduction in the number of dendrites uh, in the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex and then potentially the loss of working memory and uh, also executive function that is seen uh, within schizophrenia. Okay, right. So, we're currently looking at the midbrain viewed from above, and I've drawn it slightly slanted, like so, but never mind. Um, it should be perfectly symmetrical, ideally. Okay, so basically the midbrain uh, is a structure that looks like Mickey Mouse from uh, the top, okay? So you have these two sort of projections backwards, sort of these little curves backwards, okay? These are known as the superior colliculi, okay? The singular is the superior colliculus, okay? Now the first thing I should have actually said is which side is the front and which side is the back. This is the front, okay? So this side is this side here, and this is the back, so this side is this side here, so you'd have the colliculi coming off the back here. Okay, so here's the superior colliculus, and you, in fact you also have inferior colliculi as well, but we're not seeing those at the moment because we're taking a cross-section at the top, okay, so that we can show the phalami sitting on top of it. Okay, now, let me put a few landmarks on uh, the midbrain here. Okay, so one of the landmarks that you have is an area known as the periaqueductal grey, okay, or the periaqueductal grey matter, if you're going to give it its full name, okay, and this, uh, as the name suggests, surrounds the cerebral aqueduct, okay, so the periaqueductal grey, okay, uh, and running through the middle, then you'll have the cerebral aqueduct, and let me just move this over to this side a little bit. Okay, so this tube down the middle, which stretches through the entire midbrain, is known as the cerebral aqueduct. Now, we'll come back to the cerebral aqueduct later. Later on, we'll show the third ventricle, okay, and we'll see how this connects to the third ventricle. Oops, cere cerebral aqueduct, get rid of that. Okay, uh, so the cerebral aqueduct contains cerebrospinal fluid. Okay, so I'll colour in the periaqueduct or grey and orange here. Okay, more landmarks of the midbrain then. You also have two nuclei, one here and the other here, which are known as the red nuclei. Okay, and these look like the mouth, uh, sorry, the eyes of Mickey Mouse. Okay, and my midbrains, when I draw them, always end up looking more like pigs than Mickey Mouse. But when you see an MRI scan of the midbrain, it really does look like Mickey Mouse. Okay, so this is the um, right red nucleus that we're seeing here. Okay, right. Now that will do for now for uh, the landmarks of the midbrain. Later on, we'll discuss the substantia nigra and the ventral tegmental area as well, which are parts of the midbrain. Okay, uh, but we'll come back to those later. Okay, for now, the superior colliculi, shown here in green, the periaqueductal grey, and the red nuclei uh, will do. Okay, so now what's going to happen? Now the phalami are going to be sitting on top of the midbrain. So I'm going to now show the phalami sitting on top of the midbrain. So I'll draw out the midbrain again here. Okay, so here are the superior colliculi here. Let's see if I can get it a little bit more symmetrical this time. Here is the uh, right um, cerebral peduncle here, the left cerebral peduncle here. Okay, and then sitting on top of the left side of the midbrain, okay, you have the left phalamus here. And sitting on top of the right uh, side of the midbrain, you will have the right thalamus here. Okay, so let's have those coloured in in turquoise, as in the picture where we're seeing it from the side. Okay, so in this picture where we're seeing it from the side, all we're seeing is the side of the midbrain here, and we're seeing the left thalamus. Okay, we can't see the right thalamus because the right thalamus is behind the left thalamus. Okay, so these are the two phalami, and in fact, I think I'll discuss the third ventricle now. We'll complete this discussion of the third ventricle later. What you will notice is that there is a gap in between the two phalami, 
okay? This gap is in continuum with the cerebral aqueduct down here in the, uh, which goes through the midbrain here, okay? And this gap is full of cerebrospinal fluid, and this gap is known as the third ventricle, okay? So this is the third cerebral ventricle. Okay, so I'll colour the third cerebral ventricle in, in purple here. Okay, so this space is all full of cerebrospinal fluid here. Okay, so that's the third ventricle. Right, what I now want to discuss is the structure of the thalami in more detail, okay? Because the thalamus is a huge, huge cluster of cells, okay? A huge number of neurons. It's a great big collection of nuclei, basically. So I'm now going to split the thalamus up into its different nuclei, and we're going to be interested in a specific nucleus. Okay, so I'm going to take one of the uh, thalami here, and I'm going to take the right thalamus here to work with. Okay, so let's pull out the right thalamus here and now have a look at the different nuclei which make up the right thalamus. Okay, so the first thing to say is that anatomy divides the thalamus up on its own, okay? Before any neuroscientist came along and made divisions, there were divisions already, okay? The thalamus is divided up by um, a structure known as the internal medullary lamina. Okay, so here, the internal medullary lamina is in this sort of shape, like so. Okay, dividing the thalamus into these three sections, this portion here that's facing the front, okay, this portion that's facing into the third ventricle, okay, and this portion here that's facing out. Now, if we were to do this on the other one, it would be the mirror image, okay? So, if I was to divide it up here, you'd have something like this in this left thalamus here. Okay, uh, so they're mirror images of one another, and this little small section here again faces into the left ventricle. Sorry, not the left ventricle, the um, third ventricle. Sorry about that, I'm getting the heart and the brain mixed up. Okay, into the third ventricle. Okay, so this portion that I've coloured in, in blue here, this is known as the internal, okay, medullary lamina. Okay, right. So, now let's discuss the different nuclei of the thalamus then. Okay, so firstly, this nucleus right at the front, this is not just one nucleus, okay? So this area is actually, con well, actually contains a huge number of separate nuclei, okay? But all of the nuclei in this area at the front are collectively known as the anterior nuclei of the thalamus, okay? So I will colour in that area which contains the anterior nuclei of the thalamus in green here. Okay, so that's that area there. Okay, right. Uh, then uh, this area here, which is going to face into the third ventricle, this is one massive nucleus. Okay, and this is the nucleus that we're actually going to be extremely interested in. This is known as the mediodorsal thalamic nucleus. Okay, so medial because it faces into uh, the midline of the brain, okay? Okay, so um, I'm going to colour in the medial dorsal uh, thalamic nucleus in orange here. Right, okay, and now this section here is m much larger and therefore is going to be divided into much more nuclei. Okay, so firstly, the section right at the back of the thalamus here which I'm going to colour in in vivid purple here. This is known as the pulvinar, okay? And this is very much so involved in attention, okay? So here's the pulvinar, okay? And now the remaining area is going to be divided up into a huge number of different nuclei. So firstly, a portion that's right up at the front here, okay? Um, which is very, very small in my little picture. I'll have to colour it in in some powerful colour that will show up. The portion that I've now coloured in, in vivid purple there, right up here, okay? This nucleus is going to be what's known as the ventro-anterior thalamic nucleus, okay? So the ventro-anterior nucleus is right at the front, and for short, the ventro-anterior nucleus is often abbreviated down to the VA nucleus, okay? Uh, then behind the ventro-anterior nucleus, you're going to have a nucleus known as the ventrolateral nucleus. I'll show this here, okay? 
uh, and I'll colour that in in blue. Okay, so this portion here, that's the ventrolateral nucleus. So just behind the ventral anterior, we've then got the ventrolateral thalamic nucleus. Okay, and you might wonder, well, why am I still doing this? Because we've got the nucleus we need. Okay, well, I'm doing this just so that you have a complete picture of the thalamic nuclei. Okay, so to color code it, here is the ventrolateral nucleus in blue. Okay, in vivid purple, that tiny little one that's barely visible, that's the ventral anterior nucleus right at the front. Okay, uh, now um, in this gap here, like so. Okay, you're going to have a nucleus that is known as the dorsal lateral nucleus. Okay, and I'm going to colour this one in again in green. Okay, so this little sliver here, that's going to be made up of the dorso lateral thalamic nucleus. Okay, so this is going to be the dorso lateral nucleus, and for short, the dorso lateral nucleus is then abbreviated to DL for short. So dorsal lateral nucleus. Okay, and then sitting next to the dorsolateral nucleus, and I'm sorry this is becoming so cramped. In fact, I'm going to, um, well, actually, no, we've only got very few left to do, so we'll draw another picture to make it more clear. The one that's sitting next to the dorsolateral nucleus, which I'll colour in in red, okay, that one there, that's then called the lateral posterior nucleus. Okay, so lateral posterior nucleus. And for short, the lateral posterior nucleus is usually abbreviated to the LP nucleus of the thalamus. Okay, so that's the lateral posterior nucleus. So again, I'll colour code it. So this one's here in red, okay, and the dorsolateral nucleus, the DL nucleus, that one was there in green. Okay, right. And then this final portion, this is going to uh, contain both the ventroposterolateral nucleus and also the ventroposteromedial nucleus. Okay, so let me show this in a different way. What I'm going to now do is I'm going to take a cross section of the thalamus like so. So imagine chopping the thalamus down with a carving knife and then opening it up and having a look at what we would see inside. Okay, because this is going to help us understand the thalamic nuclei better. Okay, so if we chopped it in this way, what would we see? Well, firstly, we'd see the whole thalamus in this sort of shape here. Okay, we've cut through the oval, and now we're seeing the cross section, which would be roughly uh, a circle. Okay, now splitting the thalamus into two halves, we would have the internal medullary lamina here. Okay, so here in blue, this is the internal medullary lamina splitting the thalamus into two halves. On one side, we then have the mediodorsal thalamic nucleus here in orange. Okay, on the other side, we then have the dorsolateral thalamic nucleus in this sort of shape, and then the lateral posterior nucleus in green here, uh, sorry, in red. Okay, so in green, here is the dorsolateral nucleus. Okay, and in red here, this is the lateral posterior nucleus. Okay, so what my point here is, is that they don't extend all the way down. You might think, from the picture that I've drawn here, is that the dorsolateral nucleus extends all the way down. The lateral posterior nucleus extends all the way down. It doesn't, okay? We're looking from the top, and we're getting a very skewed picture, basically, which is why it's necessary to draw this picture here. Okay, now, basically, the rest of this space is made up of two nuclei, one of which is the ventroposterolateral thalamic nucleus. Okay, that's the bigger one. Ventroposterolateral nucleus. And for short, the ventroposterolateral nucleus is often abbreviated to V for ventro, P for postro, L for lateral. Okay, the VPL and then nucleus. Okay, and I'll colour in the ventroposterolateral nucleus in. What colour have I got left? I'll have yellow. Okay, right. So there's the ventroposterolateral nucleus in yellow. Okay, and we'll continue this discussion in the next video.